it's a great place to start the conversation because it allows us to open up some some new dimensions about the relationship between religion and climate change. So much of that relationship uh, is framed in terms of the media coverage of things like the papal encyclical uh, of 2015. And so there's a sort of impoverished public discourse about how religion is connected uh, to climate change. So I'll, I'll give a couple of examples. I, I think, yes, definitely, uh, environmental change largely and climate change in particular have tremendous implications for religious traditions uh, worldwide. And I'll, I'll say just a couple of quick things about it before yielding back uh, for a more dynamic conversation. So a, a couple of years ago, I was part of an ongoing project at my previous institution uh, in American University. And uh, I worked there in a, in a project with a colleague of yours at Indiana, David Haberman. Uh, and he and I uh, framed in the grant uh, one of the sort of planks that is religion changing uh, because of environmental change. And, and I want to cite his work in particular on this. Uh, he has a, a field site in uh, northern India where there's a series of pilgrimage routes at the headwaters of the Ganges. And those uh, rivers uh, in, in the Chardam region uh, have experienced uh, massive flooding and sort of large scale disaster events over the last five to 10 years. And what was once a, a pilgrimage uh, dedicated to the mother goddess, Ganga, uh, has increasingly in, in his work, he, he hears more often ideas that the, the river, god, uh, river goddess has become angry. And we found stories like that uh, in working with ethnographers and, and scholars of religion around the world uh, repeated again and again that because of environmental change and increasingly harsh conditions, uh, local people are having to under come to grips with uh, why uh, spirits and, and sacred places are no longer um, beneficent and why they're angry and malevolent. And so that's a, a pattern that we see around the world. Um, I, I'll say one quick thing in bringing it back to the question of Laudato Si, where I began, which is that I think one maybe underappreciated effort or one underappreciated dimension of, of that important document is why the church uh, gave it the sort of energy and attention they did, why Pope Francis began his papacy with that effort. Uh, getting involved with climate change is important for religious organizations. Religious institutions have an incentive to be thinking about their own futures, to be thinking about uh, future generations, uh, especially in an era when young people are increasingly disinterested in joining, you know, uh, traditional religious organizations. And so in all sorts of ways, whether they want to or not, uh, religious groups are having to respond to climate change. It's controlling the dialogue, not them. 